Hey guys, this is Spazman13579 here with a layout update. So yes, I know, I know, it's been like two years since I made a real update, something like that. However, I'm still here, I'm still working on trains like all the time. I just haven't made videos in a long time, I'm not sure why, I just kind of got out of it. But hopefully I start making more. But anyway, this is the update for what is this, July 2018. I'm going to start here with a couple of non-train related things. I got a new 3D printer. I had one before. It was garbage. I got a new one. This is a Creality CR10. And I've only made like three prints with this so far, but it's awesome. Just printing with PLA here. I'm not sure if any of you guys are into 3D printing stuff, but I bought this off a friend. And it actually works really well. I like it a lot for the price, and it's pretty nice. So this is one of the things I made with the printer. This is a kind of weird project i don't know why but i had this mechanism from a reciprocating saw like some cheap harbor freight saw just a motor and a gearbox and i had to use it for something so i decided to create a paint shaker and this is just a gearbox here with a uh, tow link off of an rc car pushing a 3d printed part on a couple of slides there you can see there's some oil on it and i put a switch on there and when you turn it on it shakes up the paint And it actually works surprisingly well. This is just like a weekend project thing. I was bored, so I'm like, hey, why not put this contraption to use? So I got that. This is probably the part where I get comments from like 20 people saying, oh, you shouldn't shake the paint shaking. It's bad. You're going to put air bubbles in the paint. I don't care. Another non-train related thing. I got a new toolbox down here. This is, again, a Harbor Freight special. It's like 150 bucks. It's actually really nice, but... I need a place to put all my random tools that have been laying around for years, so I got this. Alright, on to the cool stuff, i.e. train things, the reason you subscribe to this channel in the first place. I'm not sure where I last left off with the track on this layout, but it is pretty much all done. There's one siding that's going to be going right here, a couple feet down, and there's one siding on the opposite side. But other than that, this track is done. I can run two trains at a time on the loop. Passing sagging is all good. This yard is all good, as well as the locomotive storage tracks. Everything is wired up, and these switch machines are all in place and everything. So it's been operating very well. And I needed a reason, or not a reason, I needed a way to control the uh, tortoise machines underneath the layout here. So I made this. This is a little slide drawer thing that comes out. As you can see, it has a GT logo. The opposite side will have the CN noodle logo on it to kind of match this theme going on. And what I have is a green light for like your standard direction for the turnout. And if you flip it, it goes to red. And you can probably hear one of those cars derailing because it's on top of the switch. So it's actually, it's a really cool setup. And I'll see if I can get one to work here. Like uh, this, for example, is right here. So if I flip that, you've you've seen a tortoise work before, so it just flips the turn out. But I like this because this is a very narrow aisleway here. So when I'm not using it, I can just push it away, and the fascia will be covering all this, so it'll be nice and pretty. And then also, I really haven't done much scenery other than the main uh, highway over there, which everyone saw. However, I did paint the track from the bridges to pretty much right here, and I started ballasting as well. Uh, it's not the best place to show because these cars are in the way, but I did ballast all of this track, and it came out pretty good. There's a couple of pieces of ballast in the web of the rail still. I'll have to go back and clean that up, but I think it came out pretty good so far. It's looking nice. So here's one thing I made. I have never seen anyone else do this before, and I think it's really cool. And if you guys want, you can copy my idea, but this is the first one I've seen. So it looks like a normal wooden briefcase, I guess. You can just got a handle on it, walk around with this, kind of heavy. But this is actually a locomotive storage device, uh, or storage and transportation, I guess. It has two latches on the side, and uh, you lift this up. And as you can see, there's spots for, in this case, a dozen engines to sit. So you might be wondering, how the hell is this not like moving around right now? There's nothing securing it, it's just laying there. It's actually 
with the screws on the bottom. What I've done with all my locomotives is actually uh, drill and tap holes in the fuel tank in them. As you can see like this. See if I can zoom in a little bit more. Like that. And these are common uh, distances between these screws. So they'll essentially fit anywhere in this case. You can put whatever variety of uh, engines you want in here. So what it means is I don't need to carry around a million boxes with me and it takes up way less space than a dozen locomotive boxes would. It's much more secure, it's got a handle on it, it's its own box, it's storage and transportation in one, and it does take a while to make these holes in the bottom. You have to take apart the engine and remove the chassis and do all that kind of stuff. However, it's definitely worth the time because this is an awesome way to transport your engines. Here's a bit more of a detailed view, so this side wooden block right here is just big enough for the fuel tank to sit on. So the trucks actually dangle and all of your force is just on the fuel tank. So if you screw it down tight, you're not going to be bending the frame or anything because it's going right to the bottom of the fuel tank and the uh, trucks just kind of sit there. Same thing on this uh, six axle SD40 here. So here's a couple of in progress projects I have right now. This first one is a Proto 2000 SD60. This started life as an undecorated SD60 and I'm painting it into Sioux line number 6027. Here's a picture of 6027, the prototype, so you can see it. And this is coming along pretty good so far. As you can see, I do not have any black on the bottom here yet. I still have to do all that. But the red is complete. And the white, obviously, as well. All the details are on here. Pretty much all the details are included in these Proto 2000 kits, which is nice. Sorry about that terrible noise. Uh, but I put the windshield wipers on. That was one thing not included. There's a different plow, different MU cables, that kind of thing. But they're very nice uh, kits for being almost 20 years old now, 15 years old. So this is coming along well. And on to the next one. So this weird little thing is a Caslow Shops 70 tonner shell kit. This is going to be Pacific. Pacific? Pacific? I can't pronounce Pacific. PGE number 553. This is actually going to be, this is a picture of 554, but this will be 553. And it's coming along alright so far. There's really not too much you have to do to these things out of the box. I had to modify the pilots a bit because those little bottom step plates were dragging on the rail. So I had to uh, make them a little bit shorter so they didn't drag. Again, I have to paint the underbody black as per the picture, like that. But it's coming along pretty good so far. And I've never built a 70 tonner before, especially a Caslow Shops one. Uh, but it's a pretty fun kit. All these Caslow resin kits are a lot of fun. I enjoy building them. take a lot of time, but they are definitely worth the effort. And it says, uh, I'm not sure, is that a K5 horn? I don't know, someone will correct me in the comments. It might be a K5, I forget what it is. I'm not a horn guy. It has this weird, big-ass light in the front, as you can see there. Uh, no photo etch parts on it yet, but it has photo etch handrails and a couple radiator grills and things like that. The rest of the parts are in the box up there. And this just rides on the uh, Bachman Spectrum 70-tonner chassis. As you can see here, it's been kind of modified a little bit, cut up a few parts. These things do not run well at all, but I'm installing a lock sound decoder in it, so hopefully the really good motor control of the lock sound decoder, ESU decoder, will uh, smoothen things up a little bit. And lastly, here's a few more projects I'm working on that are pretty much complete. This first one is NSGP30-3, number 5817. This started life as a GP50. This is a blue box kit and it's been heavily modified and this is what it looks like now. One kind of funny thing I like on these paint schemes, or I'm not sure if I like it or not, but they have, I think there's like 17 or 19 decals, like safety warning decals on this one side and on the opposite side there's not quite as many but still a lot. And what I did to this thing is pretty much from the cab back from the cab forward, there's not too many modifications on there. 
I changed the dynamic brake housing quite a bit. This uh, top plate had to be shaved off and I put a new styrene plate on there to make the uh, contours a little bit different. Uh, what else did I do? I put different exhaust stacks on there, different horn obviously, and they patched out one of the GP50's fans on the back, so I did the same thing here with my model. Just a sheet of styrene on top of there. Uh, and I added a few just normal details like your cab sun visors and air conditioning unit, MU cables, that kind of stuff. And this has lock sound as does pretty much my whole fleet now. And it has the flashing ditch lights in the back which is a pretty cool uh, touch. In the front and back I should say it has flashing ditch lights. But this came out pretty good for being a blue box. And I put a Canon cab interior in there. It has an engineering conductor which is always fun. So there's that one. This isn't really a project, this is just a locomotive I purchased. It's an Atherin Genesis GP38-2W, obviously for the Canadian wide cab. And I made a couple modifications to this. The back end was a little bit wrong, so I changed the uh, shape. I'm not sure if I can get better light here. I changed the shape of the pilots in the back a little bit to square it off more. And I added new MU cables and a extra coupler knuckle and bracket there as well but out of the box there's really not much to change on these things they are really really nice locomotives Atherin Genesis has stepped up their game a lot and lastly here is probably one of my favorite new engines I've done in the past couple years this is a Caslow Shops SD60F resin kit and this is riding on a I want to say an Atherin chassis I forget exactly what this is uh, yeah, I forget. <laughs> I should probably know these things, but I have it documented somewhere. Uh, these, I, I love these Draper Taper kits. I've done a Dash 840CM. Actually, I've done two. There's one in there, and I have a BC rail down there for uh, John Whitmore, the guy behind Caslow. And then I did an SC40-2F. I think I've showed it on the channel as well. And this is for myself, though. And I, I really love these engines. This is the last SD60F that was on the CN roster, active, 5545. I saw this in Chicago a few years ago. It's just that I, I love these uh, wide body cowl units. They're really cool. So nothing special necessarily about it. It just goes together like a normal Caslo kit. It's probably, in my opinion, the easiest Caslo kit to do. There's not too much frame modification that has to be done compared to a lot of other ones. Like on the Dash 8, for example, there's an insane amount you have to do. But if you want to start a uh, Caslo resin kit, I would highly recommend this or the SD40-2F because they both are really not that hard. They take a lot of time, but they're definitely worth it in the end. So you obviously have all the etched metal grills and fans and that kind of stuff. This is obviously no weathering or anything on it. And I have to put a cab interior in there still and the window glazing and that kind of stuff. But it has sound, uh, DCC lights and all that fun stuff. So I think I'll probably get another one of these in the future just because they're so much fun to build and they look pretty awesome when they're done. All right guys, that's all the trains for me. But before I go, one thing I want to tell you about is my new website. It's called MotownModels.com. Here's the URL, as you can see there. And I'm going to have a couple things on there. I have a build blog already. I go over the build of my uh, BC Rail Dash 840CM 4623, I think is the number on it. Uh, that was a fun project. So there's that. I have a pretty rudimentary store on there right now. The store is expanding. It's going to be mostly ESU DCC sound insulation products on there. And also in the future, I'm going to be offering custom sound and DCC sound, sorry, what did I just say? <laughs> uh, installations onto locomotives. So like lighting and weathering and that kind of stuff. I'll have a full list of like prices and time required for stuff and things like that. So the website's growing. There's pictures on there right now. There's not a whole lot, but trust me, there will be more in the future. And make sure you guys sign up for the uh, email newsletters too. Because whenever I get any changes or post anything new on there, you'll be getting an email in your inbox. No spam, I promise. It's all legit. So I think you guys will like that. 
Thank you guys for watching, and I'm going to set you guys out with a video of a train going by.